Okay, in the last couple of lectures, we, um, we talked about how cylindrical lenses have, are defined by these two axes, these two um, characteristics that are at 90 degrees to each other. You have the power this way, which means that this is the direction that, that light is bent along its power, okay? And then we have the axis this way. And this is the direction that things aren't bent. And then axis and power are at right angles to one another. We also went over this concept of a mapping system where we have 1 to 90 to 180, 1 to 90 to 180, and we can we can map our um, we can map our lens power and axis so that we have like the power is going this way and the axis would be 90 degrees to that. Okay, so this is this is where we are to now. So what I'm going to do now is kind of define things a little better mathematically using these two basic concepts. Okay, and we're going to use the idea of the optical um, power cross, or you can see it written as optical cross or power cross. I like the term optical power cross. So the idea behind an optical power cross is as follows. If we have a grid where we have 180 degrees over here and 90 degrees over here, we can put the power of any lens system on that grid. And that's why it's called an optical power cross. It's a cross because it looks like a cross. It's a power cross because um, we're putting the power of the lens on the cross. And it's an optical power cross because if you just search YouTube for power cross, um, frankly, you get a lot of religious videos. Okay, so um, so what am I talking about? So if I have a if I have a cylindrical lens that looks like this, okay, the power is this way, and the axis is this way. And where we have the axis, remember, there's no power. And if this is a plus three diopter lens, then we have plus three diopters here. So if we put this lens on the power cross above, what we have is we have a power of plus three over here, and we have a power of plano over here. And that is how we notate that lens, that cylindrical lens that I'm erasing, okay? So if I were to lie that cylindrical lens down, now what we would find is all of the power of that lens would be up here and there'd be no power over here, right? That's if the lens were now lying down. So all the power is this way and the axis is that way. Okay, so this top situation, the way that lens is written out, the notation for that lens is as follows, plus three axis 90, okay? And the way this lens on the bottom is written is plus three axis 180, okay? So let's look at what each of these three symbols means, okay? What does the plus three mean? The plus three means it's a plus three power lens. It would take parallel light and focus through that lens one third of a meter on the plus side, one third of a meter in plus space. What's the X mean? The X means we're wondering where the axis is, right? That's what the X is in the formula. The X doesn't mean times, the X doesn't mean at, the X means axis, okay? So the way that this is written, the way that this is pronounced is plus three axis 90. And what's the 90 mean? The 90 
is where the axis of that lens is. Okay, so the axis where the lens has no power is along the 90 degree meridian. Okay, plus three, axis 90. So if we go to the bottom one now, what do we have for this one? It's still a plus three lens. It's still a plus three power cylindrical lens, but now the axis is where? The axis is along the 180 degree meridian. So when we hold the lens like this, we say plus three axis 180. Okay, so it's the same lens, it's held in a different way. If it were plus three spherical lens, all we would write is plus three sphere, or plus three S with a circle around it. Um, or I think you can get by saying plus three with just an S. So these are notations if it's a plus three spherical lens. There's no directionality to it, there's no axis. We just say it's a plus three spherical lens. But if it's a plus three cylindrical lens, not only do we have to say it's a plus three power, but we also have to say some sort of notation for what the orientation of that lens is. All right, so let's do a couple more. So what if I told you that I had a lens that was minus four diopter lens held so that the axis was along the 45 degree meridian? So the way we say that is minus four axis 45. What would that lens look like on an optical power cross? Well, where the 45 degree meridian is, we know that's where the axis is, so we know there's no power there. So 180 degrees, I'm sorry, 90 degrees away from that, which is 135 degree meridian, And you can put the number to either end, remember, because there's no directionality. It's all just axis. It's all just meridian. Um, it's orientation, not direction. Um, so what would be along the 135 is the minus 4 diopter power. So this patient would have, um, or this optical system would have, zero power plano along the, along the 45 degree meridian and would have minus 4 diopters of power along the 135 degree meridian. What do you think the power would be here, halfway between them? Well, halfway between Plano and minus four would be minus two. Minus two. So we go from Plano to minus two to minus four, back to minus two, back to Plano, to minus two, to minus four, back to minus two, to Plano. So we get this as we go around and around and around, we have a high, the highest number would be Plano and the lowest number would be minus four and everywhere in between would be something between Plano and minus four. So one third of the way from Plano to minus four would be minus one. Halfway minus two, three quarters of the way minus three, four fourths of the way minus four. Okay. Let us look at one more, and then in the next video, we will do practice problems, okay? So on this one, let's say I have um, this situation, where along the 30 degree meridian is minus two, And here's a right angle, remember. So what is the power of this cylindrical lens? Well, we know the power is going to be, and let's say it's Plano here. We know it's a cylindrical lens. So let's say, um, so we know the power of this lens is going to be minus 2. So we define it by where its axis is. So what's the axis? Well, we know the axis isn't 30 because that's what the power is. So the way to figure out the axis, we have to go 90 degrees away from 30. 30 plus 90 is 120. So minus two axis 120 is how you would write this lens. So I'm gonna leave you with one kind of confusing thing about cylindrical lenses. So remember we talked about how unfortunate it is that light is created in minus space as diverging light. So light is created with a minus sign, which is a drag. We also talked about how there's an inverse relationship 
between distance and vergence, and we'd rather have a direct relationship than an inverse relationship. So this is another drag. Well, another drag is this. We define a cylindrical lens by its power and by its axis. We define it by its axis, but what is the power along that axis? Plano, nothing. So when we say this is a minus two cylindrical lens held axis 120, minus two axis 120, we're saying this is a minus two power lens, but along the 120 meridian, there's no power. So part of the way we define this lens is where there's no power. And that's the crazy part. That's the uncomfortable part. So when I say, you know, plus three axis 90, the maximum power of that lens is plus three, but there's zero power along the 90. So if you would think, oh, that we're defining the lens by where the power is, but we're not.